My name is David Rojas. I'm a manager of Global Solution Architecture at Red Hat. And today I'd like to talk to you about Red Hat Automation Platform, specifically how Ansible automates against the Chocolatey application. For those of you that are not familiar with Chocolatey, please take a look at it. It's a great application that takes Windows packages and stores them in a repository and then a delivery mechanism to get them out to your Windows workstations and servers. Uh, it really is a nice piece of technology, a must have for all Windows admins. Uh, today, we're gonna take a look at how Ansible and Chocolatey work together to make your job as a Windows admin or just a system admin in general, much, much, much easier. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. So first of all, what's the business problem? What are we trying to solve for? As a system admin, you're out there and you needed to make changes. In this particular case, we're gonna take a look at the Chocolatey features that need to be changed on each individual server and work workstation, right? So you know, simple features that could be enabled or disabled. In previous videos, we showed you how Chocolatey can be used to install those application packages. But then at some point you wanna make changes to the features of Chocolatey itself. And again, it would defeat the purpose to go out there and say, well, we installed it automatically with Ansible and Chocolatey. Now I have to manually go and change these features one individual workstation and server at a time. Really defeats the purpose, right? So what we're going to do is take a look at how to do that with automation. We're gonna increase efficiency by making sure that this is done much quicker. You know, We're not talking five or 10 workstations. That could be done manually, eh, not a big deal, right? But 100, 500, 1000 or more, you definitely need automation to get that done or you'll be there all night or all weekend trying to get that accomplished. We're gonna look at um, not only the efficiency in terms of the time that gets done, but also increasing compliance. Many of these features are gonna be part of your regulatory needs that you need to make sure you're in compliance, especially depending on the industry that you work in or the company that you work at. And again, if you do that manually, there's a chance that somebody missed a workstation or a server or somebody made a mistake and enabled it or disabled it instead of doing the opposite, right? So we wanna make sure that it's done to every single Windows device and it's done correctly every single time. So we're gonna make sure that that happens. Right, with that, let's jump right into Ansible Tower. Let me log in here really quick. Once we do, we're gonna take a look at our, our, you know, our templates here on the left-hand side, right? When we click on that, you'll see that we have different job templates. The one we're gonna look at today is chocolatey features. Right, and we're gonna come right over here to the right side. We see a little rocket ship that's going to launch and launch this job template. Now, the first thing that it does is bring out the Ansible survey. Uh, Ansible surveys honestly are my favorite feature when it comes to Ansible automation platform. And, and I'll tell you why. It hides all of the complexity underneath the engine, if you wanna say. And we will look at that in a little bit because you'll see that it's not, actually not that complicated, but it makes it even easier. So you don't have to be an expert on chocolatey. You don't have to be an expert in, honestly, even in Windows or even an expert in, uh, in Ansible, right? You go through here, you have a drop down menus, and you pick the correct settings and you launch it. Uh, so it makes things a lot easier and really expands automation throughout your enterprise to departments or personnel that normally wouldn't be doing this type of work, uh, but in a safe way, right? Secure way. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this. We have different parameters for different features that we can enable or disable in Chocolatey. Uh, we're going to do virus check today, right? That's a popular one. We want to make sure we're clear of viruses and chocolate can help us with that. And we could disable or enable. In this case, we're going to enable it, right? Keep in mind, Ansible is going to go out there and let's just say it was already enabled. It's somewhere else. We're not going to be able to um, see that. But Ansible will know and it, will, it won't re-enable it. It'll simply check that it's enabled and it'll move on to the next one. For those that are disabled, they'll make sure and enable those, right? All right, so we click next here and we're going to get the two variables that we just said. Now keep in mind that the survey that we just filled out was just a drop down list, two questions that were answered, right? But the answers to those questions become now values to these variables, right? Feature and state are our variables and we now have virus check and enable as those values, right? When we get to the playbook, you'll take a look, you'll see how important that is that's gonna overwrite some values and it's going to use that as it runs through the playbook as it hits each individual Windows device. Right, and after that, we just hit launch. As we hit launch, we're gonna see this running. As you know, over here, status is running. Eventually it'll be successful, at least we hope so, right? It'll tell us when it started, it'll tell us when it's finished, what type of job template, um, launched by who, 
the inventory. We'll go over the inventory in just a bit, but just so you know, this is a mixed environment with RHEL and Windows, which is common in many companies, um, but we're only going to automate against the Windows devices, right? Because chocolate is used on Windows you know, servers and workstations. So as, as we were speaking, this completed already, nice and quick. Now this orange yellow color that we see here is a good thing. We're happy about that, right? That means it changed something, it made a change. And what change did it make? Well, it enabled the feature that we wanted to enable, the virus check, right? And if you look at the, the summary down here, you'll see that it went and changed one for 150.37 and for 150.6, it also made a change, right? That's a good thing. It was successful. We know that it worked, All right? So let's take a look at a few things. One of the things we want to look at is the playbook itself. Now, believe it or not, all that work that was just saved, I mean, countless hours of manual labor that you would have had to do to go out there and make those changes, you know, could have been done in just a few, a few minutes, an hour, depending on how many, you know, servers were actually hitting. But look at this. You would think there'd be a lot of complex work that you need to do ahead of time to set up this playbook to run it in an Ansible automation platform. But indeed, this is all that you're doing. And, and to me, that's amazing. At the very top here, you have the name of the playbook. And then this is really important. We'll go over inventory in just a second. These are your hosts. You're going against the Windows group of devices, right? So remember, we talked about a mixed environment. It's not going to hit a rel server. It doesn't need to, right? It's only going to hit the Windows and it'll target that group within that larger inventory set. Here's the variables we talked about. These are default values. I, I used these during testing when I was building this. I could have taken these out. But we left them in here just to show you that even though these variables are set at these values in this playbook that is running in Ansible Automation Platform, our survey set the values that we selected and overwrote these values. So the ones we selected, that's the ones that run. Here's our collection that we're using. Don't forget that um, Chocolatey has a Ansible certified collection and it shows up in our automation hub. And so we're using the Chocolatey collection. And then task, which in this case is just one task, incredibly so, that's all we're needing to do using one module Chocolatey has a number of modules. We're using the Win Chocolatey feature. And these two simple parameters, right? And again, these should look very familiar to you. We set them in the survey. The name, which we called feature, and the state, uh, which we called you know, state, to keep it real simple. So remember, we picked virus check, and then we picked enabled. So that is what the playbook looks underneath. That's the engine that powers all this. Coming back here to tower, we'll take a look at inventory since I mentioned it before. Here's our mixed OS server farm. If we want to host from here, you'll see that we have rel, we have windows and rel and then another windows. We're gonna to go to the groups. And if we go to groups, you'll see here's our windows group. Remember our playbook specifically was gonna hit those hosts windows. So it doesn't bother with any of the rel ones. It doesn't need to, it just hits the windows groups. And then if we look at the group itself, and look at the host within Windows. Here's our two, you know, that we hit during the automation process, 150.37 and 150.6. All right, sounds good. So with that, we'll go back to our dashboard on Ansible Automation Platform. You know, I hope you got something out of this. Continue doing good work. And stay tuned for some videos in the future. Keep automating. Thank you.